Hello there YouTube, this is my Modular Component Systems Stereo Receiver. This was sold at JCPenney, I cannot tell you the exact year. They still made these up to the early 80's, these style, big style stereos. This is about 19 inches across, a little over 7 inches tall. I did measure it earlier, earlier today. I know that's pretty close. This was one of the first stereos that I'd seen back in there that you could hook six speakers to. It's hard to focus on that, but you have an A and a B. A and B together or matrix. When you hit matrix, it has rear speakers. You put six speakers on this. You have a signal strength meter. One telemacro, but it just doesn't want to focus. Your signal strength meter and your tuning meter where you tune in the center, then your stereo light comes on an FM when you're on FM. You have your two different phonos, which I'll show on the back. You have an auxiliary. You have FM muting. What that does is there's no static, you just bring in a strong station. So it's dead till it gets to a good station, which I normally don't like using. I like to make sure I'm picking up everything. Here's your switch, whether you want uh, this monitor or two different tapes, tape one and two, two to one. I think that meant duplicate, you could tape from one cassette player to the next. Now I'm just guessing. I have the manual for this in paperwork somewhere with the schematic and everything. And that's nice back then, it's schematic. Case just had to go into a shop, there's still a few places to work on them. But I do have the schematic for this radio. You have tone defeat. All I know is when you turn that, everything goes quiet. You have loudness. That's kind of like bass boost would be on a modern radio. Your balance, your volume, there's your tuning. Over here, some radios only had a tone on it. This has bass, mid range, and treble. It's hard to focus on there. We'll try to get the focus. Bass, mid-range, and treble. So, I do have an equalizer, but you can't hook it to this kind of older stereo. You have filters. I know one or both these work on AM. I will show a demo of this working. One says low, one says scratch. What's weird is to turn these on, you go down. I do know they work on AM. You get static on AM, that's a big plus, because I've used this radio for DXing AM stations. It's so powerful. When I show the back, you'll see the antenna where they mounted it outside of the cabinet. The iron ferrite, which is just a rod made out of a type of iron, like a powdered iron. And they wrap the wire around it. That's the simplest way to describe it. But really a plus to have a signal strength meter and a tuning meter. It's almost like having a piece of uh, ham equipment or something to have them kind of meters. I did have some blue cellophane behind here to make this look bluer because it has kind of a bluish white look to it. I didn't really like it. I'm going to figure out something different before I put the cover back on. Give a quick view from the front. That's your tuning section. That's your power. A lot of them only had two of these type transistors, which makes me think these two are for the rear speakers, which would probably be big woofers or something. I wish I could find a book because it shows how to wire it up. Here's your power supply, your transformer, or it comes in, drops it down to the lower voltage. This does have four diodes, so I know this is a DC radio. Some people back in the day knew how to hook these up to car batteries in case of power outage, how to bypass this. Here's the big reflector for the lights. Pretty big reflector. There's two bulbs burned out, and the way it looks, they're both in the middle. I'm going to be finding out the voltage to them. That's one reason I want to take it apart, plus I want to air it out and dust it out. I've been setting up on the shelf. I have used it last year and this year, hooked into my big uh, other receiver. I have a 200 watt receiver. It's a cheapie. So don't ever believe something's what it is just because it says 200 watts. It's just a cheapie insignia brand. The radio quit in it. Even though the amp part works, the radio sounds really nasty on FM. So I was using this as my FM receiver. But now to have my desk down here, I want to be able to run everything from down here. Because the other one had a remote control that shucked out. I just set this and just come out of it with no volume or nothing. You'd like it's called a line out. I just run out of here. I use one of the tape outputs or something. And then I'd power it through the amp. 
we're going to hook this back up to just by itself. We're going to use a set of these cheapy KL8 speakers I've had for over 10 years. It used to be like $25 a pair. Just to have them up on the shelf. It's just going to be more just a lifting radio, not cranking it up. And if I want to crank it up, I can hook into my amp up there. And set your amp. I can set my amp in a certain level, then use the volume in this to drive it. I can also hook my MP3 player up to that too. I can't hook it up to this. I can, but it doesn't sound that good. Whenever you have inputs in the back. If you have phono or tape inputs, experiment. You buy a cord, it goes to those RCA type plugs. I'll show it on the back. You'll see all them type of plugs. You can buy a cord to run your MP3 in the back of these older radios. I've always had luck trying the phono one instead of the tape. They're ceramic and magnetic. This, none of them sound the greatest to run an MP3 player in it. Maybe I'll experiment with it again. But that's enough for the front. And we'll show the back, and then we're going to show it in action. Try to get some pictures here where it's not so glary from the light. So this is, I should have had my tape measure out again, but I guess I measured it once for myself. It's like 19 inches across, 7.5 inches tall, with the cabinet and everything on it. But we'll show a view of the back, and then we'll show it in action. And here's the back view of the radio. You have two tape inputs, tape one and two, phono, ceramic, or magnetic. There was two types of turntables, needle cartridges. Your 300 ohm is for your old twin lead, your old brown two wire. Here's a 75 ohm, like if you use coaxial cable and it uses that splitter, it goes to two terminals. Here's your AM, so this be AM, and here's your AM ground. Here's where I hook my long wire antenna. Here's the iron ferrite bar antenna. I wish I could copy this. If I ever found one of these old ones like this, I'd get it apart and I'd have this antenna and hook it to a different radio. A lot of them are about the same. There's four wires in there. You got a black, white, green, and red. A lot of radios were just about similar. You could hook this bar up. This antenna works great. And you go over here. One of the first stereos to start having six speakers. Because you have A and B, okay? You can play A and B at the same time, if I remember right. We was at the front, I already forgot. And rear speakers. I noticed the rear speakers have a big old resistor going to ground. Like maybe they pull more because they probably would have been your subwoofers. It's hard to get in on the numbers and stuff, code numbers. It's just hard to focus on them. I really wouldn't recommend on old stuff running power out of stuff. Just run it separate, just so you could run like your turntable or something. You gotta actually overload circuit protection, which is nice. And here's the back of that light reflector. We'll get up here. Here's your power section. Now with these four big Motorola type transistors, I'm sure two of these are for the rear. Most stereos I've ever been in, it has two of them, one for left or right. I'm sure two of them for the back. So it's going to give you more ump. Your transformer, of course, again. Here's your power supply that converts it down to whatever voltage it runs. This would be your tuning section. See your tuning knob. Now I'm going to document this in pictures in case I have to put a string on here. It goes around here twice. This would be really easy. I've sat and tried drawing pictures of this before on a radio when a string is broke. And believe me, it's a headache. This I'd be called like your control, whatever, like your volumes and everything. But this is your actual tuning section. Here's where you get your AM and FM. Where your tuner is. I have some of these little tuners. I showed in my radio jump. Your tuning knob has a big heavy flywheel. See that big brass looking flywheel? That's so your knob can spin fast. It's kind of hard to see it in there. That big round heavy. That's a big flywheel weight. Now I had this in here, this cheap cellophane three times, you can buy it at hobby stores, because I was trying to make it blue. Well, it looks so crappy. See how wrinkled it's got? 
I layered it three times because I don't want to put nothing over the bulbs because you put covers it probably melt. I know I have a couple bulbs burned out. I'll be checking the voltage to try to find out what the bulbs are. Well, they're AC or DC. Some people, some old stereos, you could actually hook 12 volts to them if you knew how to bypass your power supply. Some radios did convert down to DC. Because you got your four diodes. See these resistors gray? See those black diodes? There's four of them. Whenever you see four of them, that means you're converting AC to DC, which I showed from the front. I'll show another view from the back here. Big giant capacitors. Capacitors are what usually filters, not to get too technical. But when you're converting AC down to DC, you have to filter it and stuff, and use your big ones. That's kind of what that does. It helps filter and everything's nice and smooth. Then you have, of course, a voltage regulator, which this is always your voltage regulator. It's like a power supply, like a power supply kit. And some of them had adjustments and some didn't. Don't go monkey around with this. One thing to look for when you look at old radios is you can take it for it for you buy it. This was a little rusted. If this is really rusted and corroded, you know it's been laying around a basement somewhere where it's had moisture. I wouldn't recommend using the air compressor, but it's been so dry here with the humidity and dew point that I drained my air compressor the other day, a little bit of moisture in it. It's been so dry that I've been braving it. But you still have oil vapor coming out of a house air compressor. You go spraying oil down here, you're just going to collect dirt. Conditions coming in on 11 meters again. Turn that down. I even have that frequency programmed in my police scan. It picks up CV. So when it skips real loud, it'll come in. That's enough for the back. And self-explanatory. It's the first old stereo I came across that had rear speakers. And like I might have mentioned before, this could be a Pioneer or Kenwood in guts in it. Because this was sold by J.C. Penney. I wish I could find the books to show everybody. I have the schematic, the owner's manual, everything for this. Even accessories, turntables and stuff. This little brochure books that came with it. Because when you bought it, they wanted you to buy more, of course. So buy the turntable too, but... It doesn't have preamp out and preamp in. Now that's to run equalizer. My big modern stereo has a preamp out and in. So I run out my equalizer and then back in and I can equalize what I have before I amp it up and take it out. Well, I ain't going to worry about that too much for this because this is going on the shelf now. Of course, it's going to go up around this shelf. It's going to hang off a little bit, but the rubber feet will still be on the wood underneath. It will stick out a small amount. So I want a DX on this on AM. This is a great big receiver DX AM at night. AM radio stations. And FM too when conditions are right. AM the other night because the skip's coming. I got an AM broadcast station on AM band from Idaho. So it's fun. If you want to get into a simple hobby, get you a good AM receiver. Find something old like this that was quality. Because like I showed on the front, there were switches and stuff that gets rid of like a noise blank on a CB. Gets rid of all that static and crap. This is plenty too long enough for the back of it. So, the next video, see you with it in action.